So we're launching at the World Economic Forum the latest research we've done um, on financial wellness. And we've looked at data across 10,000 employees in the United States and in the UK. So some of the statistics are quite shocking. You know, we see collectively that right now, probably around 48% of employees in the US have money worries of some sort, about 40% in the UK as an equivalent. But they are likely to have more sleepless nights, actually 8.1 times more likely to have sleepless nights in the US relative to the UK, which is about 8.8 um, .8 times. But they're more likely also to uh, not finish daily tasks that they're doing. 5.8 times more in the US than compared to about 7.6 times in the UK. So more likely to have troubled relationships as a result of that with their co-workers, about four times more. And then as a definition of that, twice as likely to then start looking for alternative jobs. So we're moving more to looking at financial well-being as a holistic approach, definitely, but also launching a financial wellness score. So you can measure an employee's wellness on a score of one to five. Five would be very strong, i.e. less stressed about money, unlikely to be in significant debt, and could be more focused at work. That would be someone probably on a higher income necessarily, but not. That's a myth. What we found in the research is that those people that earn at the higher end of the scale, typically in the US, $160,000 uh, and upwards, but also in the UK, about $100,000 thousand pounds those people are actually the most stressed as well so there is the lower end in which you'd expect to see but there's an enormous amount of interesting data around the higher end that also suffers that collectively leads to a bottom line impact of about 13 to 17 percent of uh, salary for companies in the UK and not too dissimilar a number in the US and that's equivalent to about 50 billion pounds in the UK and 500 billion dollars uh, in the US. So we talked about today at the World Economic Forum, the panel that we hosted, and the trust that exists between employers and employees is extremely strong. It's probably the most valuable channel to focus on changing that conversation and moving the dial. So then the question then becomes, what can you do? Now we talked today about some of the key findings that Mercer have come across, and that engaging employees, having purpose-driven organizations, makes a difference. But I think where we're shifting towards is this new social contract we talk about today, a changing workforce, uh, a gig economy which we have to be able to support because they have uh, income that's not consistent anymore. So that leads to, I think, employers now moving towards looking at tools, but looking for tools that there's a one-stop shop. So I going to a place where you've got access to solutions which are access to affordable finance, refinancing high cost debt, access to savings, savings pots for those moments that matter in people's life, and then financial education is the glue that brings that all together. So I think the fintech industry there are, is a buzzword at the moment. What we don't talk about necessarily so much is fintech with a purpose. And that is probably the space where we at Salary Finance sit. So today, if you can create businesses and solutions that are scalable, we talk about it as being measurable and uh, sustainable, that's really important.